Hello everybody, welcome to the second part in my wrap up, my July and August wrap up. If you don't already know, I decided to split it up because I read quite a lot in July and August. A lot for me, I should say, but anyway, yeah, I read books for the Booktubeathon, which I'm still talking about. So if you haven't watched part one yet, I will leave a link down below so you can watch that first. But anyway, let's just get into it. But first, I'm sure you remember Remus. He's doing very well still crying all the time when I'm filming, so that's great. Well, now you're quiet. So in July, I finished the audiobook for The Retribution of Mara Dyer, which was the third book, yeah, the third book in the Mara Dyer trilogy. And honestly, I was pretty disappointed. I was kind of on the fence with it when I, while I was listening, I was mildly intrigued, um, but I just got so confused. And again, I listened to it on audio, so maybe, if I had physically read it, I would have felt differently about it. And I know this is a beloved trilogy, so I'm sure this is an unpopular opinion, but it just was not my cup of tea. And since this is the third book in the trilogy, I can't really say much about it without giving anything away. So I'm gonna have to be sort of vague here, but um, there was just a lot towards the second half of the book that I felt like the author was rushing to inform the reader of. And I just, I don't know, it just didn't, grip me like the first book and I also felt like Mara was really different in the third book like personality wise and I know that characters can grow and change and evolve um but I don't know something was inconsistent and I as a reader it just didn't grip me as much I was also just like lost a lot of the time um and she used different perspectives like we went into somebody's perspective for a little while I don't want to say who um but it just it was inconsistent with the other books and I didn't like it. Some of the side stories that had been developing for the past few books, I don't know, I feel like there just wasn't as much resolution or development. And yeah, I don't know. I can see why people liked it. Like I was definitely turning turning pages, I was listening to it. I, I definitely wanted to know what was happening, but I was confused and the characters didn't feel like the same characters to me. So I was kind of listening to see what was gonna happen, but not loving it at the same time. Something about it just felt detached or um, forced a little bit. And I just, I didn't love the way the plot wrapped up. That's about as vague as I can be. On a completely different note and reading experience, I finished Sula by Toni Morrison. And oh my gosh. First off, I'm a, I feel a little bit stupid for saying Sela so much because clearly it's Sula. I actually listened to this book narrated by Toni Morrison herself. So I got to have like the full effect of um, how she pronounces words and towns and things like that. This book is on a whole other level of artistic brilliance. This is the first time I've ever read Toni Morrison and I was just completely astounded, like blown away, astonished by her writing. I will absolutely read another book by her. Um, I actually, I listened to it and I physically read it, which I never do. It feels a little bit decadent to do that, um, but it was such a cool experience because I felt like I was in her voice, I was in her head, um, but I was physically reading for myself too. So I was able to kind of, I don't know, hear the poetry and this book has so much poetry. I think I'd like to reread it to digest it a little bit. I do think it's a fast paced book in the sense that, I mean, it's short. I read it in two days, maybe a day and a half, but to really appreciate it and to chew on it, I feel like you need more time to digest it. Um, I feel like this is a great book for aspiring writers to read. Um, there's just so much to learn about her talent. And actually, there's a part in this book, Writing Fiction, which is another book that I read in August, um, that talks about this book and just the craft um, techniques that you can learn. I'm going to see if I can find it, but basically it talks about Toni Morrison's masterful ability to match pacing with emotion and plot. Okay, it says, do you wanna see how time can ma be magically slowed down? Take a, take a look at this section from Toni Morrison's Sula. And then it goes on and on to mention a spoiler. So maybe don't read this before you read Sula. But then you have the passage, which I'm not gonna read because of spoilers. And then it says, this passage, which continues a while longer, covers only a few seconds of real time but Morrison has slowed time to an excruciatingly slow pace, 
to adequately reflect the horror of the moment in the narrator's mind. If you think about it, times of crisis do indeed seem to pass very slowly, each second exploding into an eternity. And as you can see, this is far more effective than telling readers about a character's emotions. So that is very, very true of this book. I felt like the pacing was amazing. The language was so rich. And I don't know, I just couldn't get enough of it. I will definitely pick up another one of her books. Oh, I also wanted to say that I got this book through a subscription box quarterly. Britt Bennett, the author of The Mothers, included it in her box as um, one of the sources of her inspiration, which I could totally see reading it. It totally reminds me of The Mothers. But yeah, I would definitely recommend if you're interested in reading it, consider getting the audiobook because Toni Morrison reading it is just like, I mean, it's already dripping with poetry, but to hear her perform it, it's just a thousand times more beautiful. This book is elegant, it's intimate, um, it's just really full of horror and destruction, and it also has this kind of quiet desperation and loneliness in it um, that deals with broken friendships and weird family ties, and it just kind of breaks your heart. I'm actually baffled by anyone who could pick this up and not enjoy it. I mean, I can understand reading it and not really knowing what's going on or feeling like it's going above your head a little bit, but I don't know, I feel like that's what I enjoyed about it. I felt like I was dining at this like world-renowned chef's restaurant and I was just getting this meal that, you know, I was consuming this meal that um, was unmatched in presentation and taste. And I didn't necessarily know why it was so good, I just knew that it was good and I was enjoying it. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's kind of how I felt re reading this. Next, I read Rebel Angels by Libba Bray, and this is the second book in the Gemma Doyle series or trilogy. Um, and I absolutely freaking loved this book too. I devoured this book. I feel like the first book, A Great and Terrible Beauty, was a little bit slower for me to get into. I really enjoyed it as well. Um, but this one just hooked me right away. I felt like I don't know, it wasn't it wasn't as slow of, of a read for me. And I love this book. It was definitely creepier and darker than the first book. It really um, tackles some, some dark, hard themes and um, topics. We just learn more about characters. It kind of muddles everything. And it just, it, it feels darker. I have no other way to say that. Nothing's black and white anymore. Everything's just kind of gray. Um, the plot does not disappoint at all. I will say that it may lag a little bit in the middle, um, but it definitely wasn't enough for me to have to put it down or anything like that. I also really liked that we got to see Gemma in more of a leadership role and kind of just growing in that sense, sort of wanting more for herself. There's definitely some feminist punch in here, which I loved, of course. I don't know, I was just enthralled by that growth in Gemma and um, the way that the relationships have changed in this book and grown and um, have become more complex and just the thriller vibes in this book were really great. I will say that I found parts of the book a little bit predictable, um, but that's not really something that bothers me as long as the story is well written. I'm definitely one of those character driven readers who's there, you know, like if I'm reading a book, I'm here for the storytelling. Um, it's more of a journey for me than a destination. So, um, I don't know if you tend to get really annoyed by predictable books, you may not enjoy it as much, but, um, there were some twists and turns for sure. I do remember reading on Goodreads that some people were really surprised by those twists and turns and didn't think it was that predictable. So maybe it was just me. I don't know, but we really get to see more of Gemma's life outside of the boarding school, outside of the realms. Um, and so we get to learn a little bit more about her family, which was interesting, but we also get to learn more about the realms. So it's, it just has everything I loved in it. Um, romance, perfect. I just can't wait to pick up the, the next one, honestly. Okay, sorry if everything's different. My camera just died, so. Here we are. But anyway, the next book that I read in the month of August was Writing Fiction, um, which I've talked about. So I actually mentioned more about this book in my Writerly Reads video, a recent video where I talk about the new book club that I've started on Goodreads slash Instagram slash Twitter. Um, and basically it's a book club. It's where we read books all about writing. So it's for writers, aspiring authors, already published authors, editors, aspiring editors, 
Um, basically, we just read books on writing and talk about the craft of writing and what we're learning. And this book is such a great introduction to this book club. This book is a great practical look at sort of the building blocks of story at a very um, fundamental foundational level. Each chapter is written by Gotham Writers Workshop instructors, so um, they really know what they're talking about and they're really good about including examples um, and exercises for people who just want to learn in a practical way. So yeah, I kind of mentioned this in my last video, but it's just a really accessible book. Um, and it's written by people who've really mastered the craft. Um, I really enjoyed the chapter on characters and kind of the four methods that you can use to build better, stronger characters. I think it was action, speech, appearance, and thought. So basically that chapter was all about creating well-rounded characters and how to create a sense of depth um, kind of in a moment by moment experience of the story. I also really liked the section on description. I think it was called to picture in words. I think it really just kind of highlights a lot of pretty language and some tricks of the trade to kind of figure out what to keep and not keep in your story. I also also mentioned this in another video but the chapter on revision was obviously super intriguing to me as an editor. I like that the author starts with what to do before revision and how to kind of focus on creating space between you and your words and then he kind of breaks it down from big picture revisions to um, more specific revisions with characters and setting and plot and pacing, description and dialogue and voice and grammar. Overall, this book is excellent. If you're a writer and you're interested in getting better at your craft, I highly recommend it. Um, I definitely feel like I just scratched the surface with this book because I did not do the writing exercises, um, which are kind of just sprinkled in throughout. Let's see if I can find one. The section's titled Your Turn. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like you could probably get so much more out of this than I um, than I got, and I still feel like I got a lot, so I definitely recommend it. The last book I finished in August was V.E. Schwab's A Darker Shade of Magic, and you guys, I totally devoured this book. Everyone who told me I would love V.E. Schwab was absolutely right. I kind of started to read this Savage Song, I think it was, um, I think last time, this or last year this time, um, and I enjoyed it, but it was a library book and I didn't finish it in time, so, I never finished the book and so I've always been kind of hesitant to pick up one of her books um, but I loved this book. This may be a little controversial but I may have liked this book more than Six of Crows um, just because I was so hooked from the beginning. Normally with fantasy books it takes me a little while to get into it just with all of the world building and all of the character names that you're introduced uh, that the author is introducing. Um, but right away, I was pulled in by this story. The premise was really cool. The characters were really interesting. The writing was the kind of writing that I connect with. This book is about a magician named Kel who has this rare ability to travel to different parallel Londons. There's red, gray, and white London, and black London, which no longer exists. Each London or each world has varying amounts of magic, I guess you could say. Um, so so gray, the gray London... Um, really doesn't have any magic at all. The red London is kind of full of magic everywhere you turn, and the white London is kind of starving for magic. Hell was raised in Arnez in red London, um, and he serves the Marish, I think it is, uh, empire, um, as an ambassador, and he travels to the different Londons. But Kel is also a smuggler, and so he's known to a few magic collectors and enthusiasts throughout the different Londons as somebody who's occasionally brings and delivers um, different items between the different worlds. Basically with the hunger for magic comes the hunger for power and Kel eventually finds himself in a very serious predicament that, um, you know, puts all of the different worlds at risk. He meets a very interesting girl named Delilah Bard who is a thief hungry for adventure and that's pretty much all I can say without spoiling this book. Basically, I totally get the hype surrounding this book. The characters are phenomenal, especially Lila Bard. 
She's just such a kick-ass female character who is never once the damsel in distress, and I just loved her so much. The world building and the way she describes the magic is just so interesting and so well done. The characters are flawed, um, they have so much emotional depth, and there were parts of this book that were just downright chilling. I read on Goodreads that a lot of people felt like the pacing was slow in this book, but I did not feel that way at all. I felt like it was really, really fast paced. There were action scenes that you just fly through, and then there are slower scenes that just kind of build upon the character development, but even in those scenes, I felt like I was turning pages there was just so much intrigue. Overall, I'm dying to get my hands on the second one and I'm going to have to do that soon even though my TBR pile is ridiculous right now. So those are the books that I read in July and August, even though it's like the middle slash close to the end of September, but I did it guys. I talked about the books that I read and now it's fall and it's time for all things creepy and spooky and oh, I just can't believe it. I love it. Before this video gets too long, I just wanted to say thanks for watching. Um, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and also I'm planning to make more videos, I promise. I know I've been out of the loop, but I have a million ideas and I want to kind of throw myself into them. Just got to find the time. I will talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye!